So indeed with the tremendous. So we've looked at tremendous in the heart, Quran, and um, th that the heart is the only space enough for the azama, the tremendousness of the divine. And so the Quran and the heart are then given this word tremendous. And so if you honor this tremendous, then you see who? Then you see him. And now we have the, the Fatiha, the, the, for Ibn Arabi, he always wants us to remember that the Fatiha is seven verses, and there are seven re verses which are responded to. So seven plus seven, 14. So what we'll do here is have the, uh, this Hadith where we understand about the seven verses of Fatiha, the call and the response. And I'm not sure if we had Aisha, were you going to do this or or Salah or Omar? Oh. I, I can do it if uh, if Aisha. Yes, please go ahead. Aisha, you, you go ahead <laughs> if, if you heard. That's fine. 31st Hadith. Abu Huraira said, I heard the messenger of God. May God give him blessings and peace, say. God, ever mighty and majestic, is he, says, I have divided the prayer into two halves between me and my servant, and my servant shall have that for which he asks. When the servant says, praise be to God, Lord of the universes, God says, my servant has praised me. When he says, the all compassionate, the most merciful, God says, my servant has repeated my praises. When he says, Sovereign King of the Day of Judgment, God says, My servant has glorified me. And once the prophet said, My servant has given himself over to me. When he says, It is you whom we adore and you whom we ask for help. God says, This is between me and my servant, and my servant shall have that for which he asks. When he says, Guide us along the straight path, the path of those to whom you have bestowed your favor, not of those who have incurred wrath, nor of those who go astray. God says, this belongs to my servant, and my servant should have that for which he asks. Okay, thank you, Aisha. Yeah. So this will be, uh, it's interesting that we didn't have the, uh, the recording, but uh, we'll just see what happens. It's, it's going to be an unusual uh, day today, I think, inshallah. So the this alighting place has 14 properties. So the seven, of, which is the call of the, the, of the slave of creation, and the seven, which are the response of the haq, of the true. And so of the seven, <clears throat> the one is singled out for the master of the time period. The two and the three, so these are two, are the amamain, the two imams. The four, five, six, and seven, are the cardinal directions. And the 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 are singled out for the alternates. So these are the special beings, the special um, people and beings who are in uh, the cosmos, the one, the one and two, and then the four, and then the seven. So that's how these 14 come together. And this alighting place, uh, is the one that is preserved flush against the realm of this world. So it's for healing. So uh, Ibn Arabi is just moving very quickly here, but it's a healing uh, uh, alighting place and it gives you soundness. So sihat, validity. So invalid, validity, sihat. It is just as the seven climates are preserved by the seven alternates and the four directions are preserved by the cardinal pegs. Then by the two imams, the realm of the unseen, which is both the realm of this world and the realm of the seen, those two are preserved. The seen is what the senses perceive. And by the pivot, the one, the Qutub, all of these are preserved. Indeed, he is the one, the matter of the realm of existence and spoilation revolves and pivots around. So the one is the one we pivot around and it's the tent pole. And when the tent pole is there, the tent is held up. When the tent pole is gone, the tent collapses. And these are upon the heart of the 14 prophets. So being upon the heart is following the footsteps of. 
there Adam, Idris, Noah, Abraham, Joseph, Hud, Saleh, Moses, David, Solomon, John the Baptist, Aaron, Jesus, and Muhammad. Peace be upon them all. And then each one of these I have cited has a path appropriated and solely that person's path. A knowing elevated to be seen clearly by him and of report narrated. You inherit from whoever I cited, you who do not have lawmaking prophecy, though you may have universal prophecy, the true dream. We shall cite about all this what is easy. You see, the explanation may grow too lengthy and may branch off into a place which could hardly be fenced in. So this is how the transmission takes place through the lineage you inherit. And so by inheriting, you inherit what these prophets were given, and you are a prophet in the dream sense, but not in the lawmaking sense. And then of the divine names, they have the following. Allah, so this is Abdullah, slave of Allah. Arab, Hadi, Rahim, Rahman, Shafi, Qahir, Mumid, Muhi, Jamil, Qadir, Khalik, Jawad, Muqsid. Each of these design, divine names looks to the heart of one of the prophets we cited, and each prophet pours abundantly to each inheritor of theirs through the lineage. Each prophet is like a membrane between the names and the inheritors. So the names come here, they hit the prophets, and they give abundantly and pour forth abundantly to their inheritors. And they have the Mojam letters, and Mujam is the ones that are want of clearness, letters in the first part of the suar, of the chapters of the Quran. They are as follows, Alif, Lam, Mim, Sad, Ra, Kaf, Ha, Ya, Ain, Pa, Sin, Ha, Kaf, Nun. Okay. And this is theirs in the place of divine assistance spread, stretched forth. So Imdad and Medet. So Medet, Imdad is the stretching forth, the link, the connection. And so we get divine assistance through the divine names come to the membrane in which are the prophets who pour forth abundantly to their inheritors, which is the lineage. And this is where we get Medet, the help from. These letters are from the world of the divine breaths. What is composed of letters from these letters specifically is part of what linguistic convention imposes in each and every language by means of which the benefit comes about in that language. In fact, the words have, according to what was told to me, special elites in the world which do not belong to the rest of the world, words. And so what this in every language means is that we know that there are 124,000 prophets, and we know that there are friends, inheritors of these prophets. And Ibn Arabi tells us there are friends of these prophets in every generation. So right now, there are friends of these prophets right now. And because they are given to the entire world, they are universal, they will be in each and every language. So each and every language will have their prophet and the prophet's inheritor. And so we have access to these prophetic inheritors in every language of the world. So this inheritor is then the, the central grace that comes from the divine in that we can inherit what was given to those who have passed on. Allah to Allah, Salamu Allah, Allah ke ya Rasul Allah. Salah to Allah, Salamu Allah, Allah ke ya Habib Allah. Deep within my heart, the vast pressure of love, transforming me to clear diamond. Tears from your eyes, O oh mercy of Allah. All creation floods with this love of Rasul. Delight of Allah, peace of Allah. Be with you, beloved of Allah, glorious one. 
praiseworthy one, Ya Nur ad-Din, Sheikh of Islam. Your fragrant cloak, greenest of the green, is worn by your friends and kissed by your saints. Ashki Muhammad, passionate in love. Ahmed Mustafa, let blood of love. Merging with Allah, subsisting in Allah, emerging as Allah, Rasul Allah, vessel of the love. Nectar of Ali, Ya Nur Adin, Kutub of Misery, Ya Nur Adin, Excess of Reality, Ya Nur Adin, Kutub al Arafin, Ya Nur Adin, Gnostic Master of the Dream. Beautiful. So the light based spirits to the appointed. Prophets, among them 14 spirits, based on a command of God, descending from the names divine which we cited, flush against the heart of the prophets, and the truth of the prophets are cast flush against the hearts of the ones we cited, the inheritors. So this is the process of guidance. Obtained by the single prime among the primes is an inheritance of the entirety of what we cited. So they take inherited knowledge from the path of the above cited among the spirits who are angelic, prophetic, and human-based. They take by means of the special face, which is in every created being, based on the divine names, knowing is not learned by anyone we cited except Muhammad You see, he has this knowing in its entirety. Indeed, it is related that he has learned the knowing of the first and the knowing of the lasts. So this is one of the special, the six things given to uh, no other prophet but him so this is the universality, this is the knowing in its entirety, and this is where the place, the special face where this, the Fatiha was revealed. And so this special face is the place that we have gone to for each of the 114 uh, chapters of Quran. And here's uh, something again, uh, only makes sense if you take it not to be quite literally. So he says, there are treasures buried in you. Learn that God has treasures in the nature-based realm below the throne of the mist. So in the cosmos. So this is actually in the cosmos of the world that we're familiar with, no matter how vast this cosmos might be. Matters buried in her troves, in which is the felicity of the creatures, just as gold is a buried treasure buried in minerals. The images of these treasure troves are the images of the words composed from the phrased letters, but they will not emerge manifest when God desires them to emerge manifest, except flush against the back of an earth of bodies of the human, flush against their tongues. So the extraction of this treasure, the discovery and then extraction of the treasure is through the human tongue. Their expenditure from this treasure and the profit are exactly there being uttered as a phrase. So when you open up this treasure, find it, expend it, and then gain its profit, it's the utterance as a phrase. It is like the statement of the human being, the hawala la quwata illa bilal ali al-azim. So you have al-zim at the end here again. Azamat, azim, tremendous. We've been watching that throughout for the Fatiha. No might and no power, but by God, the elevated, the tremendous. These are words from the handed down treasure troves, a text most clear based on God upon the tongue of his messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The first treasure trove is what God made emerge manifest upon the tongue of Adam, peace be upon him. He was the first to spend from this treasure trove, circling the Kaaba when Gabriel came down and circled the Kaaba with him. Adam asked, what do all of you utter during your circling of the house? Gabriel said, we used to say during our circling of this house, glory to God and all praise to God and no God but God and God is greatest. Now, God bestowed on Adam from a place which the angels did not know, the phrase, no might and no power, but by God, the elevated, the tremendous. This remains a practice for us to recite during the circling for Adam's children and for everyone circling the house. So not just the, the humans, but everyone, all the beings circling the house until the day of arising for judgment. 
messenger of God, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said that Adam was bestowed this word from the treasure trove under the throne. So the physical place under the throne in the cosmos. You see, the treasure trove buried under the throne is in fact what is buried in our configuration. So when God desires to bring forth the treasure trove from there, from our configuration, he makes it emerge manifest from our tongues. And he means this, and he, make, and he makes this a means of becoming near to him. So the treasure trove of the cosmos, so this is of this world, this cosmic cosmos world, the treasure trove is extracted and realized and made real and made profitable when it comes on the tongue of the human being, in the tongue of the human being's configuration. So this is a treasure that doesn't manifest, doesn't get spent until the human being with the tongue speaks it. And then when the human being speaks it, <clears throat> the treasure is now out there in the world. Spending the treasure, <clears throat> excuse me, spending the treasure is articulating it. And it is this way for everything which he buried there, everything in which there is a nearing to him. And what is not a nearing, nearing is, mar is not a treasure trove buried. No, that would simply be created at the moment upon the tongue of the creature. So there are some things that we just create on the tongue, and that's fine. And then there are things that we have extracted as the treasure trove, which come out and are and their gold and their beauty and their and their richness is manifested through the tongue of the human being. The image of the treasure buried, you see only a solid matter is buried here. So it's, an, it's a solid matter. It's something that's going to come out. It's not a correlation of anything. Is that God, when he desires to bring out this buried treasure, he radiates brilliantly in an Adamic image. So an image of humanity. Then he speaks this matter, which he desires to be buried as a treasure for us or for whoever he wishes among his creatures. So he takes on this Adamic form and speaks the way Adam speaks, the way the humanity speaks. When he speaks it, that place hears it, the place in which he buried the treasure. You clutch it. Then, when God configures this place as an image, this treasure emerges visibly in the articulation of this image. One benefits from its emergence before God. Thereupon, it never ceases to fluctuate and transfer along tongues of the reciters of it forever and ever. So when this treasure is is the treasure is created by an Adamic image of the divine who utters that image, that image who utters that sound, that word, those phrases, which then gets buried and lodged in humanity. And then when humanity speaks it upon their tongues, it then is the treasure is opened up, discovered, and then expended. And when it's expended, it's expended from every tongue that is uttering that phrase. It is just like the one who spends his wealth which he had deposited as treasure in his coffer. This image is the deposited treasure, if you understand. It is only deposited treasure based on the divine special face. Anything else is not a deposited treasure. So the divine special face is a place where the Quran, the Torah, the Anjil, everything is revealed. It's the special face that every created being has. The first to articulate it is the place where it was a buried treasure, which God buried as treasure there. For the person who caught and retained it, it is a vicar bringing them nearer to God, characterized as being a treasure trove. So the place is the first, and then the vicar, the articulation, is the second. Uh, so, and, and this one, I'll ask uh, Omer to read the the left side, and then I'll go ahead and take up the right side. وَإِن تُصِيبُهُمْ حَسَنَةٌ يَقُولُ هَذِهِ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ وَإِن تُصِيبُهُمْ سَيِّئَةٌ يَقُولُ هَذِهِ مِنْ عِنْدِكَ قُلْ كُلٌّ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ فَمَا لِهَاؤُلَاءِ الْقَوْمِ لَا يَكَادُونَ يَفْقَهُونَ حَدِيثًا مَا أَصَابَكَ مِنْ حَسَنَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ وما أصابك من سيئة فمن نفسك 
وأرسلناك للناس رسولا وكفى بالله شهيدا. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم used to say as our teacher, the good, all of it, is in your hands. Your hands. That is, you, Allah, are the one who deposited the good as a treasure in your creatures. So it is your action in them and your depositing of treasure. This is why it is a nearing to you to do so. Then he said, and the bad is not related to you. That is, you did not deposit bad in your creatures. This is his word. Whatever good happens to you, it is from God. And whatever bad happens to you, it is from yourself. Therefore, he annexes the bad to you and the beautiful to him. His word is truthful and his report is true. والخير كله بيدك والشر ليس إليك. Okay, thank you. So then this, this on the right side here is an expansion of, of that. As for his word, say everything is from God's side. That is the definition, making known what is good or bad is from God's side, as is the determination that this is from God and this is from yourself and this is good and this is bad. This is the meaning of everything is from God's side. And this is why he said with regard to the one who is ignorant among the ones we cited, but what has come to these people that they fail to understand a single fact? That is what is with them that they do not understand what you are saying to them when indeed I said, whatever good happens to you, it is from God, but whatever happens to you, it is from yourself. So I, God speaking, have removed the ambiguity or I have shown clearly how the matter is based on me as it truly is. So when I say everything is from God's side, the one who knows God will learn that I indeed mean the determination and the notification about it, that that is from God's side, not the badness itself. When Messenger of God وسلم, learned this, he said, the good, all of it, is in your hands and the bad is not related to you. And in this way, there is his word and the soul and what balances her. He inspires her to her wronging by teaching her that it is a wronging and her writing that it is a writing. This to make a division between the wronging and the writing. You see, she is a place for the visible emergence of two matters in her but the matter may become confused in her and she imagined that all of it is a writing. So God teaches her in what he inspires to her, something that may be used as a criterion to separate for her the wronging from the writing. This is why he comes with inspiration and he does not bring the imperative, that is do, what, do not do what wrongs you. You see, indeed God does not command with the imperative the unmentionable. And the wronging is an unmentionable, a shame, shameful or unheard of ab abomination. And so the command is always for the good. And then what we speak as a treasure trove is the divine treasure trove. What we speak on our own is on our own. And the determination will be whether this is good or bad will be all is from God's side to tell us which is good, which is bad. What is a writing? What is a wronging? So back to the 14, the dhikr belongs to the root and he is the pivot. The two praises, alhamdulillah, the two praises, meaning the ample from straightness and the harmful, those are the two. Uh, all praise belongs to God, the giver, the generous, and a statement about the harmful. All praise to God in every state. So whether something is good or bad, alhamdulillah is the appropriate response. And as for the four directions from which Satan comes to the human being, it is his word, I will come at them from before them and behind them from their right and from their left. 
So each of these directions needs to have one of those four cardinal pegs to protect our faith from that avenue, from that direction. As for the seven alternates, um, so, and uh, let me just ask, are, is, the, is the screen still visible or? Okay, good, because <laughs> I don't see the thing. Uh, good, <laughs> this is a fun time. So as for the seven alternates, they have the projection of the seven attributes. So powering, hearing, seeing, uh, living, all those seven attributes, they get seven alternates to protect them. So they prefer preserve for their owner their performance of the good, and they guard him from performing them in bad. So we have the dhikr, we have the two praises, the four directions, and the seven attributes, all of those protected by these beings. This is the sum, 14, which we cited, for people who are intelligent among the faithful when they are fair. Whoever obtains the protection of what we cited, that one is protected from error. This is asama, asama, to be protected from error. There is nothing but these in the outward and the inward, and God is over everything, all-knowing. Now when you learn this, and its lock has been opened for you, proceed towards each one of those we have specified for you, according to what they have, which we cited, such as the divine names and the specific letters and the understandings you inherit from the aforementioned prophet and light-based spirits. There will reach to you a tasting of everything we have cited and a kash disclosing its meaning. So do not neglect to put all of this into practice. And again, the encouragement of Ibn Arabi, absolutely amazing. So he's telling us all, everyone who is listening, hearing, reading, that they will not fail to reach to you a tasting of all of this. Just put it into practice. And then in the long list, at, because at every chapter he has a long list of the other things in this alighting place that he can't possibly tell us all about, he lists these ones. <laughs> These are the mother loads of the knowings, which this alighting place encircles. And all is a knowing based on her. So the alighting place separate, uh, let me see if I can do that. So the alighting place's separation into details for understanding is not fenced in except by God. That is, no one knows his knowledge of them that they are not fenced in. You see, they have no endpoint, and based on them comes to pass the increase in knowledge for the one who seeks them. And the one who has provided these knowings without seeking, it is his word, say, my cherisher, increase me in knowledge. So we either gain knowledge by it being gifted to us or by asking in prayer, Allah, increase me in knowledge. Um, let me, okay. So this is the brilliant wordless mother of the book, the other names of the Fatiha. And we have, and Bhakti, I think you're on. Uh, Bhakti, your microphone. Just uh, for that. <laughs> Yesus Ahala Leka Yahabi Ahala Maleka Yanabi Saramaleka Salawa Dula Leka Yesu you are the light of harmony. Ya Habib, you are the light of ecstasy. Muhammad, you are the true lover. And you are the beloved of Allah. Ya Rasul, you are the light of clarity. Ya Habib, you are the night of majesty. Muhammad, your sweet, full 
steps with give your perfume thoroughly pervade the universe so you are the rain of mercy yeah you are eternal mystery Muhammad, we are in paradise Madina is manifest as our heart Ya Rasul, you are the noon of the noon Ya Habib, you are the noon of the Muhammad, you're free, eternal light and light as all the creations of Allah Twenty-three years of the fountain of Quran Jabanur to Jabar Hamahun Arafat Brilliant world as much There was a book streaming through The diamond heart of Rasul Ya Rasul Sahalah lekar ya habib sahalah lekar ya nabi salam lekar salawat tuhulah Thank you. So with that, the membrane there, the, the brilliant wordless mother of the book comes, streams through the heart of Rasul Salam, and then to the inheritors and the friends and the inheritors. And so that's our process. That's our, that's the, the direction that all of this goes. Now, and then to sum up this, uh, his discussion of this alighting place. Of all the alighting places in their great multiplicity, whatever we cited about them in this book and whatever we did not cite, there is no alighting place which is fair and conveys requirements of reality and does not abandon any argument belonging to God or to his creation, but gives fully the due of lordship her right and the due of slavehood her right. And there is, after all, only slave and lord except this alighting place alone. So this is the only alighting place, only this one, gives the full due to lordship and to slavehood, seven and seven. In this way, God taught me what he inspired as Ilham to the family on the path of God, which makes flow customarily that God will teach all the inheritors of his prophets. It is an alighting place, which is strange, wondrous. Its first part encompasses all of it, and it all encompasses all of the lighting places in the Quran entirely. I've never seen anyone verify this except a single individual, perfectly completed in his friend authority. I met him in Sevilla and accompanied him. He was in this alighting place and he never left until he died. May God be kind to him. Other than this individual, I have not seen anyone, despite the fact that I myself never recognized an alighting place or a sect or a cultus, but I saw someone arguing for it and having it in their belief system and being characterized by it, by acknowledging it in themselves. I never related a position or a sectarian position, except based on its people who argue for it. So he talked to everyone that he, that he mentions when he, if he cites or relates a position about some a sectarian matter. He sees the person who is a proponent of that, talks to them. Even if I had been taught it from God in a particular way. Yes, inevitably God shows me a proponent of it in order for him to teach me the generosity of God that was given to him, to me, and his grace bestowed on me. So Ibn Arabi is telling us that all that God gives him a proponent and says, here's someone who's going to argue for this position. Talk to him, learn his position, then you can say what that position is all about. This so much so that I was taught that in the world, let me see if I can adjust all this. I'm sorry. Um, this so much so that I was taught 
that in the world there is someone who argues for the end of the knowledge of God and his creation, and that the enabled beings come to an end, and that the matter inescapably will join up with non-being and obliteration, and the true will remain as a person in himself, but there will be no world. So that there'll be a God, but no world. I saw in Mecca someone who argued this position. He spoke plainly to me about his belief system. He was from the people of Sus in the land of the far west, somewhere in southern Morocco. He used to present arguments to me, and he served me as an assistant. He used to wring my ears with this position until he had made himself completely clear to me. <laughs> I know exactly what you're trying to say. And I could not refer to him from this position. I do not know after he left me whether he turned away from this or he died in its midst with this idea. He had on his side knowings which were comprehensive and excellent. So he wasn't a stupid person. He had lots of knowings. <laughs> However, he had no religion. He had no deen. So, so he didn't have the Torah. He didn't have the Anjil. He didn't have Quran. He didn't have any of the religions. Instead, he established the religion of Islam only in form to protect his blood from being shed. So he was a hypocrite. He said he'll, he pretended to be Muslim so that he'll be safe. This was his statement for me for my sake, and he provided his position. There is no ignorance in all the step levels of ignorance more tremendously immense than this. So I want you to be thinking of what is, why is this position the greatest of ignorance? And there's no more tremendously immense ignorance than this one, that there is a that there will be a God who will stay God in his person, but there'll be no world. So what did this man not know? What was his ignorance? And if you know, you have been given the greatest gift, which is knowledge, which is knowing what I want you to be putting into your own heart and mind what that is. So Ibn Arabi always tells knowledge is the great thing. What is the, the great thing is to have knowledge. What is that knowledge? And that this person here, the one who said God will always exist, but the world will be obliterated. Well, there'll be no more us, there'll be no more world. What, why is this the greatest of ignorances? And as you are thinking of the answer to my question, we will dive into Medet uh, with Nora, please. O oh, Mohammed, first light of eternity, O oh, Ali, whirling lion of Allah, O oh, Hassan, beauty of the lovers of beauty, O oh, Hussein, mystic moon of Islam, O oh, bright pearl of truth, living essence of paradise, enlightened lady Fatima. O oh, bright pearl of truth, living essence of paradise, enlightened lady Fatima. Medet, medet, helper of those who seek mystic union, Ya Rasulallah Medet Medet Help you who unveil the unity of being Ya Habiballah Medet the secret of the path 
is yours the way to blessed extinction, the truth of Christine consciousness, the secret of the path is yours, the way to blessed extinction, the truth of pristine consciousness. Medat, 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 ya Rasulallah. Help us and lift us up unveil awaken us refine illumine us o habibullah medat 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 ya rasulallah help us and lift us up Exalt and empty us, absorb and consume us, O oh Habibullah. Medat, 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 Ya Rasulallah. Okay, thank you. So what was what is this that person's ignorance, the one he met in Mecca? And what is the greatest knowledge? So it's the greatest ignorance is not understanding that I am a treasure concealed in you. So I am a treasure concealed in you. And when that treasure is seen for the first time by the light of Muhammad Sallallahu that treasure speaks words which will become the treasure that will flow and fluctuate throughout the cosmos and all of the worlds and says, there is no reality but you. There is no God but you. And then the response is, and you are the messenger of that reality. You are the light, the light of Muhammad Sallallahu And so this means two. There is always a God. There is no God without the world, which is the beautiful light of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that that love that comes between the two is one that never ends, is never satisfied, is never enough, it never ends. And so the greatest of knowledge is to know that the divine love for the divine treasure which is lodged inside humanity, that that will never end. And so the greatest ignorance is to think that you can have a God and no humanity and no world. And so our medet, what we call to is exalt and empty us, absorb and consume us, O Habibullah. Make us to be such a pure heart that receives this treasure that is lodged in us, the divine treasure, and to recognize that divine treasure. And as we recognize that divine treasure, then it is a treasure that is opened up and then it flows and fluctuates and transfers throughout all of the worlds. And so that process never ends. So for Ibn Arabi, knowledge is to know divine love. It's simple. Knowledge is to know divine love. And so the path of knowledge that Ibn Arabi talks about is the path of love. It's the path of divine love. And so for Ibn Arabi, when he says, know this, learn this, he's saying, know this divine love and know that it's two. It's the divine looks and what is seen says, I see only you. And the divine says, I see only you. And so this beloved lover and beloved is the... This is what there is, this is creation, this is reality, this is everything, and this never ends. And so the sadness is that 
Ibn Arabi is saying that he couldn't, that person wrung his ears and kept saying, oh no, there's going to be God and there's going to, and humanity and creation and the world's all going to disappear and be obliterated. And uh, Ibn Arabi could never revert him from that. And he doesn't know whether that when he left him, did he ever find this divine love? Because that would give him knowledge and that knowledge would say there is divine knowledge. The divine has concealed the divine treasure in you. And so when you discover that divine treasure, it is the joy of the divine discovering itself. Or, and, so the, and so that lover and beloved is what it's all about. And so it would then be appropriate for us to end uh, with this song from Farida. And uh, so everyone give me a thumbs up to make sure it's, it, we're hearing okay. Okay. Love is in love with me.
So perhaps we could take a minute of, of quiet just for a second. Alhamdulillah. Thank you, everyone. Wonderful. Thank you, Shuaib. Assalamu alaikum and every Shuaib uh, and everyone. Please kindly repeat the paragraph that the only way to bring out the treasure from the treasure trough is through the tongue of Prophet or Aliyah. So the the so Allah takes on an Adamic or human a human image and speaks the words with human, uh, the way the human beings speak. And then that then is a physical entity which is lodged into the configuration of humanity. So it's lodged into each of our configuration. And then that, uh, the way that the treasure is accessed, is discovered, is by the guidance of the, the prophets and the messengers who then receive the divine names to receive the divine treasure and then transmit that through the inheritors the friends and so that's the uh the the importance of of lineage and this is why ibn arabi is in all of the tariqats he's in all of the paths um, as a transmitter of this of this divine treasure and then when you enter into that uh that path then you receive from those who've received, you receive from the inheritors, this treasure. And the treasure then is activated, you know, only is activated when it comes out on your tongue. And so when it comes out on your tongue, it's activated. And then everyone who takes that and activates it also within themselves and speaks those same words, uh, that person is then sp spreading and diffusing this beautiful treasure throughout the cosmos and all of the worlds. And so this is not only in Arabic or it's not it's not only within um, a, a sort of a cultus of Islam. It's in universal. It's universal language, universal humanity. And so this and so the lineage, the inheritors are in every language of, of every peoples all the time you know, right now. So right now you can count, you can use a few uh, uh, formulas to find out how many friends there are right now in the earth and the globe right now. And you'll see it's a pretty big number. And those are the ones who have inherited from the inheritors of the inheritors of the prophets, of the messenger, of the light of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Omar suggested uh, something relative to your earlier question. The truth truth of pristine consciousness is why a position that God will remain, but all other will be non-being, alliteration, is the most ignorant of beliefs. Yeah. So this, though, I think what Omar is saying is he's reminding us of how that the pristine consciousness is aware of something. So there, so that you are aware of something. Even if that something is yourself or is still the divine, it's an awareness of something. So there's that some kind of separation. And we know that separation is what creates everything. And separation, so Adam and Eve are a lump of clay. Until they separate, they're not born and they do not give birth. Until they're separated, then they give offspring. And so, and so everything has to be separated so that things can happen and things can go forward. And so, and once they're separated, because they came from one, and then they're separated, they will, they're, this process can never end. There can never be one side of the equation gets dropped off. And so to know love is to know, divine love is to know that there's no end. And uh, we're always, will be witnessing this beautiful dance of love. Alhamdulillah, that the love and beauty will never end. Um, and then Salam, how, how do we discover the divine treasure in us? 
so, uh, well, Ibn Arabi keeps telling us how very physical it is, and so you say you clutch it. So uh, you've got to look in there and get practice with looking in there, and practice finding out what is coming from the divine, and then you clutch that. Um, the way uh, it it happens, uh, it's, I mean, of course, this is this is the beauty. It can, it's a parallel event. It can be you can be taught this, and then you can discover it for yourself. But whatever, even if you're taught it, you still have to discover it for yourself. And then if you discover it yourself, you also find out that it's also being taught. And so, and so it's, it's, I, would, I kind of see it as a parallel thing. And so in my own life, I look back, it's something that I was taught, but until I experienced it, saw it, and clutched it for myself, I couldn't have it. But then when I clutched and, ha and had it, I could say, oh, thank God there was this teaching that, uh, that runs parallel to what I have experienced. So the learning and the experiencing run parallel. And so, and, it, and then there's this great, uh, it's, it's such a great, great gift to have that. And if you look back at the ignorant man that Ibn Arabi was talking about, he had the knowledge in the superficial sense. He could say, la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, but he couldn't say that Allah looks and says, you are the treasure, I am the treasure concealed in you. And then that one says, you are the la ilaha illallah. And then the other one says, and you are Muhammad Rasulullah. So that what that truly means, I only understood it, uh, you know, with, with when I received that from inheritors. And so, and so I had it in my mind. I even had it in my heart, the la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. But to understand that this means the love of the lover and the beloved and that divine love, that pristine consciousness, that um, had to come to me through inheritors. So I'm, I'm going to guess that it comes through inheritors and then it's parallel to what we know in our minds and our hearts. What a beautiful way to lead us in backpedaling into our Nur Jarahi's zikr and an invitation to unfold. Yeah, yeah. So, so now we have completed the circle. How can we proceed and cultivate in the best way? Mm. Uh, well, I, th I, I think I'm, I'm really coming towards more and more, and, 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 and no, no one who knows me will think, oh boy, this, that guy is such an intellectual. That's been a long time since anyone said I've been intellectual. Still, I also I do feel that I've gone even farther and farther and farther away from that. Um, and it's for my, in my own life, then it's been the difference between, because when you have a really sharp, brilliant brain, uh, you, 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 have, you can con contain so much knowledge, and yet it hasn't really done anything. It's like the water that gets dumped onto a seed and the seed gets washed away. <laughs> What's the use of that? You, the water's got to be gentle on the seed. And the seed is the khatam, the, the seal of the prophets, the seal means that it's a seed which is gently covered with soil and then gently watered so that it can grow. Um, and sometimes people like me with big brains, we just sort of like flush everything away with so much water. So, um, so I think the, the, the way to proceed is, to, is if you have all of this knowledge there, if you're like me, someone who has you know big brain, lots of knowledge here, um, you're watching very slowly for how the gentle water nourishes what needs to be nourished inside. And uh, and if you don't have that big brain, you're lucky because you're you're ha you're even closer to finding out what needs to be nourished, and uh, and it's always this seed though. It's always a small thing that has to be looked at gently. And because it's small, you don't want other people to see it because they'll say, "Oh, that's just that," or or "Oh, you know, some poet has already said that." No, it's not. It's your seed, and no one else has said that before. No one else has known that before. So you protect that, and then you share that with the people who are also protecting their seeds and then they they support you and they give you this love and then it all works out <laughs> does it have to be activated on the tongue why is the verbal articulation in language so important what is the spiritual role of the tongue yeah so that the tongue of course is one of the well it's when it comes to the senses it's one of the it's the place of, of tasting when it comes to the sifat, the attributes, it's one of the seven attributes. Um, it's the first thing 
that the first thing that happens to us is we are alive, we become alive. Uh, but very soon after that, it's we hear the spoken word be and we are. And so, um, so, and as we say that this is not simply from the senses, it's also the heart. So the heart speaks, the heart hears, um, but we talk about it as the tongue. So, and everybody has heard, am I not your cherisher? And whether their ears work or they don't work, they've heard that. Um, and then everyone speaks articulately, um, whether you hear it or whether one doesn't, because all of creation is speaking articulate, whether they have a physical tongue or they don't. And so um, uh, the, the atomic image or the image of humanity is that the, there's a line between the tongue and the heart. And so being integrated is when that, there's a straight line between the heart and the, and the tongue. And then we also know that all speech that we, we produce as humans comes from the innermost part, our chest, and it's an ah and a ha sound. And then it comes all the way through to the lips. And at the end of the lips, you have M and W. And you have W. So we, we say in the Sufi tradition, the H from the center of the chest to the W, the U, the, makes the who. And so if this is a long connected line, who, then every, every place that modulates and makes letters has been touched and, 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 and has been gone through until it exits. And so Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is connected to the Wav, the, the same W-U, because at, he has gone through all of the prophets that have been sent as his delegates. He goes through them all and then culminates and takes and encompasses all of them with this U, this W. And so that's why it's his uh, special number six and his special letter Wav. And then the Hu is the activation of that uh, seal of the light of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the question was raised, what about separation by death? And one comment on that is that death is a transition or progression. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's uh, we, we, we came across that, was it last week or, or we came across that once someone, the, the Ibn Arabi talks about that death um, is an extraction. So he goes to the uh, Quranic verses and the imagery of the Quranic verses is that you are extracted. And so to be extracted from one mode of existence to another mode of existence, from a life of this world to an eternal life. And that death is the extraction point or is the, or is the place where this extraction plate takes. So you are the same uh, from, the, from the beginning to no end, you are the same. You are in a mode called this world when you when we call ourselves alive, and then death extracts you into another mode called eternal life. Um, exercising gratitude. Yeah, yeah. So the so gratitude and thankfulness. Then uh, Ibn Arabi keeps telling us, taking us back, is that when you thank someone they give you more because the Quran says, thank me and I will give you more. So this process of thanking is a dynamic one. It makes the more come. And then when you get more, you thank more. And then it goes back here. And then the one who's thanked for more gives it back to you and says, here's more. And you say, thank you for the more. And it keeps going back. So it's this virtuous feedback loop. Um, so exercising gratitude is to, is to get into that dynamic. And, uh, and Allah is called Shakur and, Shak and, and, and Shakir. Is Shakur is intensely thankful because Allah is thankful for us for doing things. And so when Allah thanks us, thanks me, thanks you for doing something, then you are now obligated to do more. And so you do more. And that's how Allah gets us to do more and more and more is by thanking us. Thank you for that charity you gave that person. Oh boy, now I'm going to give some more and give some more. And thank you for that kind word you gave that person. And now I'm going to give more kind words. And so this is how this, uh, this loop takes place. <laughs> um, and the key that unlocks the treasure is love. Yes, because, because it's, it's love as it's, true knowledge, which is love. See, there's, there's sort of brain knowledge and that doesn't unlock anything, but then there is the true knowledge when you know. And when you know, it's because you know that love is what, is what 
there is. It's where things come from. It's where things go. It's it's what is, and uh, and so when you know that you've experienced that love, then all of this is becomes clear and beautiful and and encouraging and and takes you on your journey. Uh, I was asking about the principle of separation, Adam, Eve, creation, occurrence in the case of death. So, uh, so the separation that what Ibn Arabi talks about in the in the vast earth chapter 355 is that that the body and has has its articulate soul. And so the, the ruh or the articulate soul, the breath of the divine, of the Rahman. And so as long as so when we're in, we are in earth. And so when we are buried in earth, um, that being buried in earth means that we are automatically essentially completely worshiping so be earth worships automatically but the articulate soul this rule is the one that has to be told do this and don't do that and so the sharia the law and the tasking all comes because we have a earth body and a ruh or a articulate soul with us so when death separates the two who I am stays in the earth, buried in the earth. And so who I am is always worshiping Allah. And then the part that is separating goes here, now no longer needs to have law and Sharia and do this and don't do that because now it, this one sees the vision of Allah and sees God. And so when you see God directly, then the, there is no, there's no question, there's no misguidance, there's only guidance. And so my body buried in the earth and my soul uh, seeing God, that's, that's the new position. And in that position, this one doesn't need law and tasking because it's automatically worshiping because it is earth, my body is earth. And then this one no longer needs tasking or Sharia because it sees God. Um, Aslam alaikum, Shu'aib. Gratitude is the central theme in the prayer of 40th year of someone's age and in the Quran is related with the gratitude to our parents. Can you elaborate more on that? Yeah, for, for Ibn Arabi, the parents, uh, it's a, a lot, his, his crucial verse is, thank me and thank your parents. So the way we are thankful is to thank Allah and thank our parents. And so our parents are what he calls the asbab, the ropes. And the ropes are the ways of doing things, the means of doing things. So we thank God in a sense, in an abstract way. But when we thank God in the very unabstract, physical, palpable way, it's thanking the parents. It's thanking what made all of these things possible. And what made all these things possible were uh, were these ropes, these means, and the, and it comes down to when you lower a bucket into the well and you pull the rope like this, the water comes to you, and you need the vessel or you don't get the water. And you need the rope, um, and so the rope is your parents, and it's how you got to where you are, and so we thank the ropes and we thank God. Since there are thousands of worlds, should we? We think of them as being in parallel or being superimposed. Yeah, the the, the number of worlds. Yeah, you know, that's uh, we've explored that. I think we that was the first one we explored in early April. Uh, if I can see, I can see the description of ten worlds very easily as a as a um, as a faceted or projection of a of this of a particular hypersphere, and you can get ten worlds. So you have the seven Earths. And or you got the seven skies and the, and the Barzakh and and all of these worlds, and then there but there are countless worlds, and so um, they are they are nested but not in a three dimensional sense. And the and the so you could think here's one Earth and here's another Earth, another Earth, one sky, another sky, another sky. Um, so they're nested, but you can't go from one from one Earth to the other Earth. Uh, in three dimensions. And if you think about the mane of the horse, the horse has a mane that it, it has a line that goes this way and then it has these lines, the hair that, that goes this way. And what uh, Ibn Arabi tells us is that 
that the earth from from where you are right now to the highest heaven, for instance, will be these uh, steps along the way. These steps, if you, when we are in those steps, we can we can't escape them because we are in the surface of them, and no matter how far we go, we'll never get out of them. So let's take uh, three coins. Take three coins, one on top of the other. This coin. You can travel on that coin forever and never get to the second coin. Uh, the only way you get to the second coin above it is to be taken out and put in to the second coin. And now you travel that coin anywhere you go infinitely. You never get to the first or the third one until you're extracted and put into the third one. So extraction is what happens here. And that's from uh, Zumar that Allah extracts the soul from the body while it's sleeping. And if the body is to die, and then the soul stays there. If the body is to live the next day, the soul is returned. So this is how the traveling between the worlds takes place. It can't be, we can't go forward, backwards, up, down, left or right, and get to the other world. The only way we get to the other world is if we're extracted and put into the other world. If burial in the earth is so important. What about the souls of those cremated, lost at sea, or who may die in outer space? How does that work? Yeah, Rob? so the, 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 to be buried in the earth. So the earth we are in is a, we're in a surface. We're in a surface that's three dimensional. So surface, so first of all, so cremation and all that, you need one particle. It needs to be one particle and one piece of carbon. That's you, that's you buried in the earth. Now in the earth means in the surface of the earth, which means no matter how far I go up, no how far I go down, left, right, forward or backwards, I'm in the surface of the earth. So even if I stand five feet above the earth, I'm still in the surface of the earth. And so there's no way to escape outside of Mother Earth. And so uh, so once when you are buried, when, when there's one particle of you buried inside the surface of the earth, whether it's in the air or in the ground or wherever it is, you are in the earth. And so the Quran always speaks of fi alard, in the earth. Beautiful. Well, we, we've had of questions, at least at least for the moment, Shuei. Oh. Um, and I want to take a, a moment here to remind everyone that there's there are wonderful opportunities to reward you financially for your so much of your heart, of your teaching, of your what do you call it, a big brain, <laughs> so, something. Of, of all of that. And Aisha has put the uh, link in the chat box. Okay. Um, and we also have a physical address. I hope she'll put that in that um, if those who want to do snail mail can use uh, to gift you for, for all of this. Um, in addition to, of course, the gift from our hearts um, that just continue to expand. Thanks. Thanks to all of what you're offering us. Okay. Thank there you. It is. It's so much. It's so much. Uh, the, the wisdom of the community is, is so much there. And I thank you all for the none of this comes out unless you're there saying bring this out. And so it's uh, that's the tr the community is the treasure. And that's and all of this wisdom is deposited in all of us. So Alhamdulillah. Thank you. <laughs>